Getting paralyzed is the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me. Losing the ability to walk, to pee on my own, to poop on my own, to feel sexy is the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me. Before I was injured, I was a reckless human being. I used people, snorted pills off the back of the toilet, and then go work on kids' braces. I drank every single night. I didn't take care of myself. I imploded my life, moved back to my parents' basement, filed bankruptcy at 21, got myself paralyzed at 22 years old as a passenger on a motorcycle. A woman made a U-turn in front of us and he didn't stop in time. He went through her back window, breaking his leg. I went over her SUV, breaking my back in two places. My chest collapsed, my ribs punctured my lungs, nicked my spinal cord, I have a traumatic brain injury, and I coded twice and had to be resuscitated. The day before my accident, I was saved. I was at a friend's grandmother's funeral, and as the pastor was speaking, I felt this calm warmness come over me. I knew everything was going to be okay. I thought it was with Granny's passing. I was an atheist, right? I didn't believe in anything. I'm like, holy crap, there's a God. And he's going to take care of Granny. No, he's going to take care of me. I saw my own grandmother who passed when I was a child. She looked at me. She said, Jesse May, it's not your time. I can't stay with you and you can't stay with me, but you have things to do and people to get back to. Do you think I listened to her words right away? No. <laughs> I tried to live my reckless lifestyle for the first year and a half of my injury. I continued to party, continued to drink, continued to use people, got infection after infection, was re-hospitalized twice in my first year of being paralyzed. I'm 22 years old. I'm expected to live until I'm 80. How am I going to do this? I didn't give my life fully to God until the COVID pandemic shut everything down. I ran. I'm a really good runner, just like my mom. I grew up without her. She was an over-the-road truck driver, so my dad raised us. And um, similar to the speaker before me, being raised by a man who's emotionless is really difficult. You don't know how to deal with your own emotions as a woman. You don't know how to deal with those emotions from other men. And you really struggle to find worth within yourself. So I tried to run from my paralysis. For five years straight, I was on flight almost every week. I was traveling, speaking, doing anything I could to avoid sitting with it. Pandemic comes, we're locked down. My cousin commits suicide. A year before, my niece committed suicide, and both times all I felt was an agony, jealousy. Their life is over, their struggle's over. They don't have to do it anymore. Why am I still here struggling? I asked God, I said, I don't know what my purpose is, but I know I should not be feeling jealousy when someone's life is over. I know I should not be feeling this a deep sadness that I have no worth, no purpose, no reason to continue to be here, no reason that you saved me. Why am I here, God? Please just show me. My life is yours. You know, this man said to me, he said, I've been waiting for this one, girl. I've been waiting for you to get my life, your life to me. And he opened up doors. The next thing I know, I'm getting a role and I'm on set and I'm acting. I'm traveling the country again, speaking. And then COVID hits again. <laughs> My dad gets COVID this time. He's hospitalized for three weeks. And they're talking about venting him. And I'll never forget hearing him cry through the phone to my mom saying, I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready to die. What, don't, please don't let them vent me. And my mom gets off the phone. She said, Jesse, we've got we've to gotta really start planning and thinking about this. If your dad passes, we've got to get rid of the house. I rent the basement for my parents because the entire basement is set up for a wheelchair user. They bought the house two years before I got paralyzed. Tell me that wasn't God. So I prayed. I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. What, what do I do? So I apply, I apply to apartments, and I ask this crazy girl from Wisconsin, hey, do you want to come move in with me, and we'll slip rent. <laughs> and I apply for houses, but I'm denied, 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 even with two incomes, because those two incomes were considered low income because we are on disability. Well, now what are we going to do? We're going to live in my old side and breathe. You're going to uproot your life. That's what we'll do. My mom offered for Bree to move in with me, so we moved in together, but I still went back to work. 
I was like, what can I do? I could be an orthodox assistant. Okay, cool. So I go back to work and when I tell you my morals and my values as a human being were tested that entire year I was there. Think about a time you've been in an environment where people have tested you, tested your beliefs, what you know is right, what you know is wrong. In the past, I would give in in those moments. I was a follower. This injury gave me resilience. It gave me strength. It gave me the power to sit on my own two wheels, strong, and not let these people encourage me to do illegal things, working on patients with no doctor in the office and wild things. We finally got a doctor, things sorted out. I quit my job earlier this year. But things aren't easy, right? It broke my back again. The hardware is broken in half, so I was in a, a chest brace all summer long. And when things go bad, we're, we're faced with two choices. We can give up and give in, or we can put our head down, pray, lift our eyes back up, dig in a little deeper, and attack it with grace and strength and a lot of tears. That's what this summer was for me. I spent all three months preparing for surgery. I had a major spine surgery in August. They completely cut open my back, removed two pounds of titanium hardware, put in new titanium hardware. Because I prepared, I was discharged within three days. I was off pain meds within a week. I was on a flight to Baltimore to go give a keynote to the Ticket to Work and Social Security program where my voice was finally heard as a person that lived on disability and then was able to get off of it. Within four weeks, I'm back on set acting and then merging my business with another strong, badass wheelchair using women to build the, the fitness space for wheelchair users. I'm blessed to live with another powerful wheelchair woman who's helping me build a transitional community for wheelchair users. See, if I focus on everything that's been taken from me, if I focus on how hard life is and how bad I struggle and those moments where I don't feel like I'm enough, that's what I attract. But if I focus on the power within me, what I've accomplished, the amount of lives I've changed, the people that I helped them believe in themselves when they didn't know how they were gonna pick themselves out the bed, that's what gets me up. And that's what can get you up too. You have a story. You have a reason for being here. That hard shit you went through, that's your testimony. Because you're not alone in this struggle and you're not alone in this life and there's someone out there that needs to hear what it is that you have to say. To hear what it is that you've went through. To know that there's a light on the other end. Nothing in life is permanent. Not the people around you. Not the relationships that you hold. Not your health. Unless you're proactive and working on those things. And that includes your mental health. That includes your physical health. That includes the relationships in your life. Everything that you want in life takes work. And if you want to create the life that it is you want to lead, live and lead, put that work in. Put that effort in. Regardless of where you come from, your physical ability, what you think you lack, you don't. Don't wait for paralysis or loss of a loved one to know your worth and your power. You are worthy. You can do it. So wheel with me. Use your obstacles to live life to the fullest. Thank you.